Hey, Emeril Lagasse here, and we're in New York City. Not only in New York City, but on Grand Street. And you know why? Because today we're looking for the best, the best donut possible. And we found it. Mark Israel's his name, and we're getting ready to go into the donut plant right here on Grand Street. Let's go in and check it out, see how we can make them. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, how you See, doing? Man, I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm excited about being here. Thanks for the invite. I need the help. <laughs> man. Now you work in the stove to just sort of get ready to start cutting the donuts? Yep. You know, basically, all of Mark's donuts are all organic. Everything that you use. This is an organic, all winter flour here. Sea salt, right. natural sea salt. Natural sea salt. Sukunat. Sukunat. Natural raw sugar cane. Vanilla beans from Tahiti. I wish you could smell them at home like that. Oh, I love that smell too. That milk yesterday came from the dairy. That's how fresh it is. Even right down to his water. He doesn't just use a regular tap water. He uses spring water in it. You only do yeast donuts. Only yeast. You can see how airy it is just by looking at it. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful dough. You make all of your own syrups and glazes. Right. There's orange. Right. Uh, raspberry. Right. But only when the fruits are in season. In season. In season right. We just shrink the dough a little bit. Love it. And then just cut it like, pop it out. All right, see what I can do here. Try to get the best yield we can, pop it right out. All right. After we cut the donuts, Mark, we're gonna put it inside of a proofer. Right. See, what happens is the rack, as Mark's got set up here, goes in and they proof the donuts. Because he is known for like these big, Airy donuts. About how long have these been proofing? Anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. And then they go into the hot oil, and the oil is at about what? It's uh, about 390. About 390 degrees. Right. And these are donut sticks. They're not drumsticks, but they're they're actually called donut sticks so that they can flip the donut. Beautiful. Look at the color of those. Generally, yeast donuts are not fried this dark. Uh -huh. They're usually done a little bit more golden. I kind of like the taste of when it's done a little oh. bit more, you know? I wish you guys were here. I wish you could smell them at home like that. Now we're going to take them out. Going to let them drain a little bit like that. They look beautiful. Look at that. Woo! And so light. Yeah. Woo! Now we're going to see how Mark uh, sort of ices these. This is the glaze that you're making. That's the vanilla bean. I mean, the whole room is like, smells like vanilla. I got vanilla like in my brain right now. One of them that you're famous for is the pistachio one. Right. And the other one is this orange where you use organic oranges that you do the zest and the juice from. How do you go about glazing them, the process of glazing them? You do them all by hand? Yeah, I do them all by hand. Which one do you want to start with? Let's start with the orange. The orange, okay. Because you're going to have to get dirty too here. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I just put a oh. little waterfall on top of it. The fresh ingredients add a, a texture to it, too. Look at that. That's Mark's orange glazed one. All right. Your turn. My turn. I'm going to do the pistachio. The pistachio is emerald green, so that would... That's right. And then I just take it, put the donut in here, and do that little waterfall like that on all it. Right. Wow. Am I doing that all right? You're doing great. I'll hire you. All right. Look at this. And then I'm just going to... Wow. All right, so the big question now, how many donuts uh, a day you think you're going to be doing? Uh, probably about 200 dozen. 200 dozen. When that's done, it's done. Right. Sold out. Sold that's out. it. Come tomorrow. All right. Better get in line, because I'll tell you what we're going to do now is we're going to get to eat a donut. <laughs> Unbelievable. So light. So crispy. Ah. My friend, definitely the best. I want to thank you so much for having me over. And uh, thanks. I'll, I'll make sure that these are in good hands. And uh, best of luck, huh? All right, thanks. Take care, friend. I'll see All you later. Right. All right. All right. A donut plant. Now, that's a packaging right there. I ain't letting these up for nobody. All right. Off to the studio we go. Hmm. I hope there's some of these left by the time I get to the studio. How you doing?
Let me tell you. If you got to walk in the cold, at least, at least you got the donut plant donuts with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whew. I had about six on the way over. Did you see me waddle a little? <laughs> Emeril Lagasse here, and as you can see, I love donuts. Love them so much that tonight, we're going to uh, dedicate the entire show tonight all about donuts. How about like Emerald's donuts? That sounds good to me, huh? Maybe, uh, maybe you're craving a little glazed blueberry cake donut, perhaps. And um, I got a really, really super guy uh, in the house and his, his dad and his brother. Uh, the new donut plant here in New York City. Wait till you hear about these. This is, uh, can you see that? Hey, Hilda, you want a bite? <laughs> Delicious. They're in the house as well. We're going to talk to them and uh, hear about their donut story. Get ready, everybody. It's time to make the donuts right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> and Cliff, everybody, there in the house. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. If you just landed from some other planet, perhaps, <laughs> you've landed on Emerald Live. And tonight, it's all about donuts, making the donuts. How you guys doing, all right? All right. Smelling good over here, isn't it? Yeah. Gonna go, uh, you know, every culture, every... Every place has their own kind of little donut, whether it's uh, the New Orleans beignet. I'm still coming. I didn't forget about that. And, uh, you know, the little story about that. Uh, actually, the real New Orleans donut is really called a collis, which is made with rice. And uh, sometimes uh, they would even grind black-eyed peas to make it with, and they would hev heavily sugar it. That was the original uh, New Orleans donut. And then the popularity of Chicory Coffee and Cafe Du Monde with the beignets took over. Um, God knows what th where they come from, but we, uh, we had a long discussion about this, believe me, the holes. We're not going there right now. And then it's, yeah, it's a holy thing, you know. I, and then it's like the whole assortment. You know where these come from. Shh. You have your yeast donuts, jelly donuts, cinnamon donuts, powdered donuts, you know, the regular donuts, all those kind of donuts. These uh, are a type of donut. It's a, another type of beignet. So every place has, basically, their little bit of donut. And uh, generally, there are two types. There's a cake donut. It's a little more dense. And then there's a yeast donut. And uh, my friend... Mark Israel is here from the donut plant, his brother, his daddy. And um, on Emerald Live, we're always continually searching, not only here in New York City, but everywhere on the planet, the best of the best. And folks, I got to tell you, these donuts are the best. These are Mark's don't, don't even get any ideas over there. I can already see you. I heard that like a rattler coming out. I'm going to tell you all about Mark and his family, all about these awesome donuts, because they're truly awesome. I had six on the way over here, and I'm happy about it, too. <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to show you uh, how to make a basic yeast donut. We're going to talk with Mark and about his donuts. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dr. Gibbs. Hey, hey. 
Hey, hey, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Hey. Welcome back. Emeril Lagasse here, and uh, we are doing a whole show on donuts. Got some special guests with us. Going to show you how to make a little yeast donut first. A very simple yeast donut. And um, let me turn this down a little bit. I've got one of those www.foodtv.com things today. This is from Homer from Springfield <laughs> asking me, Dear Emerald, why do donuts have holes? See, there's a lot of miscommunication about that. It's that whole thing that we were talking about. But basically, some people uh, in history food history books will tell you that it was really the Pennsylvania Dutch that uh, was responsible for the whole. But there's no real proof to that. We think that the reason why donuts have holes is so that the donut would cook evenly. And that way the center would not be gooey when you fry the donut. That's what we believe anyhow. That's, so it's a www.foodtv.com Homer from Springfield Thank you for the donut. All right. Yeast donuts. Just so. You got to have yeast. Two types. Cake yeast and this dry active yeast that you can buy now in the little packets. Going to dissolve the yeast. While I'm dissolving the yeast, be sure a lot of you, I can see all the yeast guilty people in the audience that really don't know what their expiration date is on the yeast. Probably it's been in the cabinet, oh, maybe three, four years. You haven't checked it since the last time you used yeast. You want to be able to check your expiration date to make sure that your yeast is fresh. And if you're using cake yeast, God hopes that you have it in the refrigerator and not in the cabinet. Now, we're going to dissolve the yeast with some warm water, not to exceed perfectly would be about 100, 105 degrees. You don't want to exceed that because you don't want to kill the yeast. Here, what I've done is I've added some eggs and sugar, natural leavening agent that I've begun to stop beating, just like if I was making a cake batter. And then what I'm going to do, a little bit of salt. I'm going to add our yeast mixture to this now that it has changed not only color, but has also risen. And we're going to begin to start working that in there. Now, I've melted some butter in a little sauce pot. Hey, Doc, you like, you like donuts? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> you have my good friends over here, Mark and David Israel. Hey, what's happening? Hey, this is their dad right here. How you doing? These guys have been in the donut business since their his grandfather. Wow. Then it went on. Then this guy, check this out. Five years ago, the donut plant is now their place. Right. Five years ago, he started in his basement doing donuts here in New York City. Wow. And uh, all of a sudden, got written about, got a lot of attention. New York Times, et cetera, et cetera, Balducci's, Dean and DeLuca, and you can't buy his donuts because he doesn't have any by the time you get there because they're that good. <laughs> and uh, now on Grand Street, this new place, the donut plant, finally going to have a little retail so guys like you and I can occasionally get a donut. Great. Super Sounds guys. Good. We're going to talk to him in a little bit. Would you like one? Well, since you're twisting my arm. <laughs> my... <laughs> this is the orange glaze. This is the pistachio. I'm gonna go for the orange. Clay. Orange? Yeah. You see how big they are? Woo! And but they're aren't heavy. they light? Yeah, man. You find them heavy? Just a little. Go ahead. Bite into that. Tell me what you think. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, man. Glass of milk? I'm there. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Let's see. Have a spring water. That's good. <laughs> I'm using the milk in the donuts. No problem. You got to make the donuts, right? That's right. Now that that is, you see how that's expanded? I'm going to tell you more about those donuts in a minute, okay. too. 
Now what I'm going to do is I've got a little, I've got a little half and half. That was a little bit more salt and a little milk. What I'm going to do now is add these two liquids and not hot, a little bit of melted butter in there. Now, once we get those ingredients in there, you see I have the whip on. Now what we're going to do is change it. Let it get nice and light. We're going to change it now. And this is when it's going to become really, really quick. We're going to change, put the dough hook on this because we're going to actually make a dough. And we're going to start working this flour in there until it comes together as a dough. It comes off the side. We've got a nice yeast dough. Going to take a little bowl, a little oil. Put your dough in here, and we got to let yeast donuts proof two times, two times. So we're going to put it in here as a whole dough, as you saw what we did over at Mark's place. Comes up. That's what we have right here. Now, the second proofing, you've got to work the dough now. We're going to uh, work with a little flour. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our dough. A little flour. Dad, how am I doing? All right? <laughs> then what we're going to do is we're just going to... I didn't see you work much with a rolling pin when we were over, when we were making the donuts the other day. <laughs> that dough was so beautiful that it just... You could work it with your hand. Like we did earlier... Great thing to do with the kids, too. The whole thing is, is you got to fry them in oil. Now, you get them the thickness that you want. And now, basically, you're ready to cut them in any shape that you want your donut. I've got just a basic round cookie cutter. Those of you, a lot of them at home, don't have a donut cutter, one with the little in the middle. That's okay. Don't panic. And you just want to get as much yield as you can so you cut the donuts. And then on a rack, preferably, you want these donuts to proof. So that's exactly what's going to happen is they're going to proof again now for the second time. When they proof, they're ready to fry. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish them. And we'll talk with Mark a little bit about some of his donuts at the donut plant. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Oh, wait. right here I'm frying these generally uh, when people fry them most places in America they'll keep them kind of light like this and my friend Mark showed me the other day how to not that this is his donut dough at all because it's not his donut dough and uh, but he showed me how the other day how they fry them a little bit darker and uh, the reason for that is he liked the texture of that and it made a lot of sense to me so I'm gonna do this batch a little darker and uh, Cliff, I don't want you to think that I'm always forgetting about you because I'm always like going to the Doc Gibbs, you know, and you know, you're My over man. there, you know. So. All right. All right. You know, that's pistachio. Right. Pistachio. <laughs> Mark told me that I was like the pistachio glazing kind of king. Oh, I may so have a part time job over there soon. All right. So there's your, have a little donut. Thank you. See, I didn't have one of those uh, professional donut sticks either that Mark had. So I'm using this little basket like that if you do that. You could do it in a, 
you know, if you only have a pot of oil at home, if you want to do this at home for the family. I just took a wooden spoon, used the back of this, just kind of as my donut stick. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them out, put them on this rack here in a second. Now, what happens when we proof the donuts, we fried the donuts now, as Mark was saying, he fries his at about 390 degrees. Have you ever had one of those before? Not before, but I have one now. Pretty amazing, aren't they? Mm. They're so crispy on the outside, but so moist on the inside. Here's the cool thing about this. These guys' donuts here, they're all organic, as I said on the top of the... Uh, he needs water in it. He uses spring water. He goes down to the farmer's market like every Monday and Wednesday for the milk that he's going to use in there and the eggs if he uses any eggs. His glazes, all natural, only fresh fruits, no preservatives, organic, as I said, and only the fruits that are in season. His nuts, the best, vanilla beans, the best, and, uh, and you can see it's the ingredient thing in, in, in that donut. Did you, uh, amazing, huh? You had the pistachio? Yes. Un unbelievable. You liked, uh, you shared yours. That... <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm the... All right, so now, I'm going to put these donuts in a rack. And uh, most, most American donuts, when you go, these are fairly light. I'm going to make a simple glaze, a little inspiration. I made a little icing. And uh, what I did is I grated some fresh lemon. I'm going to do a little lemon icing right here. Just kind of fold that in. And as uh, Mark told me the other day, he said, look, you know, when you're doing that, it gets too thick on you, then just add a little fresh juice. Just add a little puree, add a little juice. So just remember when you're making a glaze like that, sugar and water, you uh, start dipping and it's uh, glazing, and you start getting uh, too thick, then just cut that lemon and add it in there. Jelly. It's a big uh, American donut thing. They have these pumps, these jelly pumps, or pumps that they use. They put their cream, their chocolate, their icing, all that stuff in them, and they, that way they can just put them right in the nozzle like that and just kind of fill them. If you're at home, obviously you don't have a couple of jelly pumps like in the basement, just like waiting to bring out, you know? <laughs> so uh, what you could do is simply just use pastry bags with like tips. Give you an example. Cool, huh? Had them clipped. Yeah. I got a degree in this, you know. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. <laughs> that would be whipped cream. So just use a pastry bag if you're at home. See? Oh, I love that. When that happens, Woo! <laughs> you got to let them cool a little bit too, obviously. So that's how you would fill them with basic whipped cream. Now, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just want to do like a little chocolate glaze. So you would just glaze them with some melted chocolate like that. Mark takes a bunch of nuts, say like these pistachios, roasts them, get all the flavor out of them, puts that inside of his icings. Unbelievable. That vanilla icing that you had was just amazing. I'm telling you, the whole bakery smelled reeking vanilla, like just vanilla beans, like, oh, you had to have been there, I guess. We were there. It was a good thing. Let's see what we got here. So that's basically the filling part of it. This here is a pastry cream. You could use uh, any kind of puddings. Yeah, this is a little pastry cream. We like that. Let's try this one. You know, let's go to these. These are a little cooler. Little pastry cream. You like pastry cream? Yes, love it. Which one do you like? What? Mm. Jelly? You like that one? Yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite, too. That one yet. You haven't? No. You like chocolate? I like chocolate. Not only would I do pastry cream for you, mm -hmm. 
I would do a little chocolate like that. <laughs> Try that. Now you, you're Bam. supposed to. That's right. You're supposed to like <laughs> let them kind of set. Bam's a good thing. <laughs> you know what would be like a really good combo? I bet you a really good combo would be like some of this whipped cream, right? This is like for the folks at home. Involve the kids, you know? Whipped cream or a cream donut, like I used to grow up on, dipped in chocolate. Now that's a combo, I would bet, right there. We'll see how that one goes like that. Now, we got jelly, we got all kinds of, uh, you like jelly donuts. Okay, you do? Okay, you don't. You do, okay. All right, well, we'll do you a jelly donut. Then I'm gonna do a little, see the proper ways you're supposed to roll this all the way down. That's a little jelly music by Doc Gibbs for you. <laughs> Could use all kinds of jams. Oh, look, we got a nice little mess going on over here. Love that. Nope. Okay. Now, you're supposed to sugar them. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll sugar that. Here's a little do jelly donut for you, my friend. Hope you enjoy it. A little hot now. So there you have it. That's how you make the dough. That's how you fry the donuts. That's how you glaze them or fill them. When we come back, another notch. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. Good, huh? Churros, huh? Churros. Now, you just recently went down to several places in Mexico mm -hmm. to find the best of these, huh? Right. So on we the can, street. We, on the street. Right. Which is the best. And uh, can we find these soon, one day soon? Well, I, I just started making them. I bought a machine in Mexico, and I took all the recipes that I got in Mexico and kind of combined them. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be making these awesome. too. Awesome. Good luck to you, buddy. <laughs> Churros. Out outstanding, huh? You know, I just realized, shame on me. We have like a special guest in the house, and it's like they got a sitter over here. Can't believe it. You're Wade's like mother-in-law, right? Here, come on with me, honey. Don't be shy. I can't believe. Wade's one of our great camera guys. Why'd you do that to your mother-in-law? I can't believe it. Here, Mom, you have a seat right here. Keep an eye on Doc Gibbs. Here, have some donuts. They don't even feed you. I can't believe it. You're welcome. Wade, you're in real trouble now. There you go, honey. Thank you so much. Make yourself at home. If you need anything to drink, just yell at Doc. He'll be right there. All right. Oh, well. Did you try one of these? No. Sorry, Cliff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you better share it with him, man. We won't hear the end of it. All right. We're creaming some shortening and some sugar. We're going to start making a little cake donut now. So we've done the yeast donut. Now we're going to do, uh, do the cake donut. Once that creams... I'm going to add buttermilk, natural leavening right here, a little buttermilk. A couple of eggs. When I have the paddle on that now. So I got my liquids in there. I'm going to sift flour. How much flour you go through a week, Mont? A lot. <laughs> a few thousand pounds, huh? A lot. 
So now we got that shifted. A little shift in music. Thanks, Doc. Now I got a little baking soda, baking powder. Hmm. Love that humidity. A little salt. All right. Now what we're going to do is this. As I told you, we're going to switch now from the paddle to the dough hook. Then what we're going to do, we're going to add just a little bit of blueberry in here right now. I'm getting a little blueberry flavor just inside of that, the milk and the eggs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start slowly adding in a little bit at a time our dry ingredients. And this will start forming our dough. I can certainly do this by hand. After I saw that machine that you had, I was like, huh. I'm not doing it by hand anymore. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. Right. That was really... And then we're going to start working it in. Once we get a little bit of that flour incorporated, don't want to mix it too, too much. Make it tough. We're going to add a little bit more of the flour. And it all comes together. Right at the end, we're going to add in the rest of the blueberries. So we've got this blueberry cake dough right now. Now, when that all comes together, we got the blueberries in there. Again, we're going to take a little bowl lined with a little oil. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to refrigerate this one. So that gives you an indication at home and you want to do this with the family. You can do this a little bit ahead of time. And then when you're ready, you can take out the dough. See here? We'll take out that cake dough. Now, it's much heavier. It's not like yeast, though. These are very dense. When we're ready, we're going to flour our surface with these as well. Bam, Bam is right. <laughs> All kinds of gadgets. Now, we're going to take our cake dough here. Very, very different type of donut dough here than the yeast. At the donut plant, Mark and the family, they don't do cake donuts, as I said earlier, only yeast donuts. There are some places that only do cake donuts and not yeast donuts. It's very tricky to do yeast donuts. We'll get them to the right thickness. And then the donut cutter of your choice will cut them. You see, as I said earlier, these don't really have to be proofed. These don't have to be proofed. These just have to be cut. And then after that, The oil is about 370 degrees, 380 degrees. Show you one of these right now. I'm going to take one of these cake donuts. And we'll just kind of start to fry them. You can glaze them. You can sugar them. Most people, when they come out of the oil, Unlike a lot of the fillings, or like the glaze, like with Mox Donuts, they'll either just use powdered sugar or they'll use cinnamon sugar. 
Generally, those are the two types. So they'll leave them plain. So we're going to fry up these cake donuts right now. When we come back, we'll show you how to finish them. We'll be right back. Stick around. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Everything you want to possibly know about donuts. Yeast donuts, cake donuts. We're frying these little cake donuts right here right now. Put a little bit of those uh, holes or whatever you want to call these little puffs. Or got those in there as well. Now, these aren't going to proof like a yeast donut. So you can cut them out. Fry them all in one shot. Save half the dough if you want, maybe for later. You can't do that with yeast donut. But boy, those yeast donuts, let me tell you, they sure are good. I was talking earlier about an icing. And uh, generally, powdered sugar, cinnamon sugar mixture, generally on these, make a simple icing. Use really good powdered sugar, a little bit of milk with a whisk. You could add a little vanilla if you wanted to it. This is just the basic icing. Really not that many ingredients to make from scratch. Mark and I were talking at his bakery too about how you know, a lot of people making donuts don't really not only make them from scratch anymore using really great ingredients. They use sort of this box mix, you know, just kind of like open it up and add water kind of thing. It's really not really the same. So it must be a food of love thing for sure. All right, we're going to take these out. We'll let these drain over here now. You want to ice them, you need a little icing rack. You let them cool a little bit, and you can just sort of dip them in like that and ice them. It should be a little bit cool. That could actually be a little bit thicker, that icing, in which case you would just add a little bit more, uh, more sugar to that. Or, as I was saying earlier, what a lot of people like is either the, either the powdered sugar or the cinnamon sugar. Oh. Might be a treat for you guys. You never know, you know. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So there you have it. The difference between cake donuts and yeast donuts. Nice little, nice little flavor. The blueberry really just mm -hmm. does it, does it real well. Bam. Now, I like them powdered sugar, actually. Cake donuts. Mom, how you doing? I'm good. Donut out. <laughs> there you go, honey. Okay. So there you have it. I um. I want to thank uh, you, your brother, your dad, uh, for coming on, sharing your donuts. It was an incredible donut experience for me. We wish you the best of luck at the donut plant. 379 Grand Street, folks, if you're in New York City. Mark Israel. By the way, one of my favorite weather guys, Dave Price, is here. And... Uh, 
That Ryan guy, do me a favor, will you? Yeah. Bring him this donut back and remind him just who Emerald is, will you, when you go back? Tomorrow morning, I really appreciate it. Breakfast. Thank you. All right, Good my friends. Friend. Are yours too, my friend. All right. Hey, what can I say, huh? Holy donuts. I'm Emerald Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thank Mark Israel and his family. See you tomorrow, everybody.